as you know, we did some uh, hunting for UFOs and Sasquatch in uh, Hawaii, and it turns out uh, it's a great place for things like that. But what they have is actually called the Minihoon, if I'm saying that right, which is uh, small people. And uh, I tried, you know, turns out it's not something I'm really that good at. near a water source. So I think if we were going to actually find habitation, we wouldn't see it near the water. It would be it would be up on a plateau area in the hills. Let's see if we can get there. You know, this is exactly the kind of place that, uh, that I was talking about. This is the kind of place that I would expect to see something. So, uh, I can kind of see an opening up here. So, I'm going to check this out. Oh, oh. oh. Uh, hmm. Apparently, uh, apparently I'm not very good at this. <laughs> um, okay, well, maybe next time. <laughs> so, uh, today we're going to be talking about the real Sasquatch and, uh, Iceman and missing people. Here it comes. Hey guys, welcome to Propeller Head. Today is all about the missing link, Sasquatch. And we want to start out by talking about the new movie, Missing Link. On April 12th, I discovered Sasquatch. Pleased to meet you. I'm lonely. On the other side of the world are my kind. I shall get you there. Do I have time to get my bathing suit? The search is on. We will find your family. <gasps> the team is ready. Throw me out of the pit. It's hard to know whose fault that was. And nothing can stand in their way. Stop that! You'll have to climb the wall. Okay. Ah! Oh, no! Bravo. Missing Link. Yeah, that's great. Now, is Zach Galifianakis the, uh, is he the voice? That sounded like him. Yeah, uh, I actually don't know. You can't put Zach in a film and not have him be one of the lead roles, I feel like. Yeah. He, that's a personality. Anyway, it looks hilarious. It I don't does. know if that is uh, true Sasquatch research. <laughs> it doesn't look very scientific. No, I don't think so. it looks very entertaining. But, so what do you think about movies like this and movies like uh i wrote a note down here for about smallfoot or even you know back uh was it the 80s when harry and the hendersons yeah which for in england it was bigfoot and the hendersons yeah i heard that but it was um still very entertaining um, um i mean it feels like if even though Har uh, bigfoot and the hendersons or harry and the hendersons was like you know in the 80s i feel like bigfoot is becoming more mainstream and there's certainly, you know, a lot of a lot of other shows that talk about it in a in a documentary style, right? right. Like discovering Bigfoot, that kind of thing. Yeah. So um, who knows? I mean, look, the fact that we have a film called Missing Link, 
it certainly backs up the evolutionary theory, right? Because we've been looking for a missing link for a long time. Well, or is that just creative titling? I mean, you had small foot, which I thought was a nice flip. Right. Um, I still haven't taken the kids to see that one yet. But uh, uh, again, that's not exactly research, but mm. it is fun. But the fact is, it's, uh, it is still bringing things in. And these are for kids, yeah. kids movies. So it's, it's bringing this topic in that some would say is really controversial, but, but opening it up for general audiences. Well, I t you know, on the on the the other end of that spectrum, I recently watched Prime and Primal Rage, okay. right? Which yeah. is all about the uh, it's it's like the adult version, if you like, or I should say, the horror version of uh, Bigfoot, and they call it the Omar. Okay, and it's uh, and it look it talks about the Native American history or the folklore behind it. Yeah, and that deals with it in a much more scientific, if you can say that. But you you know you can see that. The uh, the researchers for the script or the screenwriters they really sort of watched a lot of things. They studied a lot of um, okay. anecdote, anecdotal stories, what people talked about, because they talk about how you know some of the things that Bigfoot does um, sort of in the movie is what you hear about, like on something like Sasquatch Chronicles, for example. Right. right? Yeah, that's so a good podcast. How they self, yeah. how they, they yeah. you know, how they camouflage themselves, the sheer strength, yeah. um, you know, the fact that they can just disappear. They're, they're much faster than humans. Yeah. Some people even say they have, they have this um, almost like their, their reflexes are so superhuman, yeah. along with their superhuman physical strength, that they're just operating in almost like a different time-space continuum. Right. So we are kind of these like plodding, slow, sort of, you know, like animals, they can literally run circles around us, you yeah. know, and they, they know they're in their natural environment, right? So they can disappear. They can, they can just literally run up a canyon or disappear um, into a tree. Exactly. They can disguise themselves. So I think like when we're in their yeah, territory. Is, isn't that all made up though? I mean, that's well, what, you know, you, you get stuff like this. I've, I've written down the names of some of these movies. Uh, it's, it's kind of introducing it to you like it's folk, like it's dwarves or like it's fairies or... Well, know. I would say, I mean, that's true, but there's a lot more physical evidence. Now, I didn't realize that you've always talked to me about Bigfoot, yeah. right? You've been into Bigfoot like a lot longer yeah. than, than I have. And I obviously just know, I just knew the periphery mm -hmm. of this topic. Yeah. You said, how about we do a show about Bigfoot? Right. I fell down the Bigfoot rabbit hole <laughs> and... I actually still feel as I've only scratched the surface right. of the knowledge, but it's it's it spans the whole spectrum. Yeah. It's like, you know, you have people disappearing. Yeah. You have the missing link. You have good Bigfoot. You have bad Bigfoot, right? You have a Bigfoot stories of like, you know, bones found in caves where right. the Bigfoot are eating people, but then the stories of Bigfoot's helping people and, yeah. and are living alongside, like, you know, like a woman who's lived with them for 40 or 50 years and she's doing, you know, without going too deep into it, she's like, she, she literally has them in, their house, in her house watching um, TV shows with her. Right. I mean, Which I mean, you know, again. Kind of lends itself to the fact that they're supposed to be different kinds. Yeah, exactly. Because apparently there's some you wouldn't want to associate with and there's some. Uh, yeah, and that brands. seems, you know, like I say, I've only scratched the surface, but there, there's definitely... The benevolent ones, yeah. there's the, um, you know, the, the dangerous ones. And I think that's, you know, why maybe, you know, if you listen to uh, just a fraction of the stories out there, I mean, you think about it, the sheer number of sightings, it's in the tens of thousands. Yeah. It's not just 20 people. Yeah. And it's, and I, the, what gets me, Rob, is the stories, the, the storytellers. Yeah. They're so believable. It's like, it's like a, an old, an old cop or somebody who was in the military or somebody who was, you know, someone's granddad. And you just like the way they tell the story and you can, you can feel the emotion. Yeah. So they're either really good actors or really bored, but you know what I mean? But they've, they've, they've actually spent a lot of time coming up with these elaborate stories with details, these really like peculiar, peculiar details that would, you wouldn't expect somebody to make up. Right. And that to me lends itself to credibility. My name is Mike Woolley. I'm from Keechaw, Louisiana. I had an encounter back in December of 1981 with a Bigfoot while deer hunting. Uh, it was a beautiful uh, December day, perfect weather for a hunt. Uh, he must have been about 20 yards from me, 15, 20 yards. 
So I take my rifle, I've got a high-powered rifle with a high-powered scope on the rifle, and I look through the scope at the creature. It was cold, you know, the moisture was coming out of its mouth, its nostrils. The face was, was, was human. Uh, it, uh, the eyelashes, I could see the eyelashes, you know, the eyes, uh, the teeth, the teeth were big, big teeth, flat teeth like our teeth. But as far as a Bigfoot, I thought that was something that existed out in California. I just thought that was something somebody made up to make money off of. Well, I jumped down off my stand, and I'm running to the west to get to my truck. And I look over my left shoulder, and this creature is running through the woods. And I knew, man, this thing is going to get me. It's, it is mad. It is PO'd. It's going to get me. So I know what you're saying. <laughs> but, but I feel like... These things, uh, like having these movies out, people say there's a controlled narrative. How can all that stuff be going on that you talked about? Mm. You know, it's in people's houses and there's, and you, you talk about evidence, but everybody discounts the things that, that are brought forward as evidence. DNA, people have been trying forever to get DNA processed. Mm. And uh, there's some controversial figures doing that. I don't think it's worth digging into right now, but there are people trying to do DNA testing, right? Right. On some of the stuff. Yeah. And some of it has come up unknown. Well, just think about it. Well, if you test it and it comes up unknown, what do you do with that? Mm. Right? You don't have anything to pair yeah, it with. No reference. But I think um, it doesn't, you know, having movies like this come out, it doesn't mean that there's some controlling authority who is mm. who's saying, well, let's make a let's make a Bigfoot movie and make it friendly so that everybody thinks it's, you know. Right. I don't think it has to be. Well, let's look into the history then. Yeah. Because the yeah. movies are now, but... If you know the 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 folklore that That's we mentioned have been talking about this the Bigfoot or the Sasquatch right um, for well over a hundred years probably hundreds of years right and Native well, Americans I Native think. Americans it goes back even further I, I think even before that even before we had history with Native Americans wasn't when the Vikings visited didn't they there's I don't know if this is you know, uh, uh, is this connected to the paintings in the caves um, on not, the walls? How far back do, does it go? No, this would be when when uh, the Vikings first came to Nova Scotia, side right? Okay, and, and apparently decided not to have something uh, to, to um, uh, create a um, <laughs> not to live here, right? Uh, because they uh, they saw big hairy men. Oh, apparently right. that was they were just the, that was the Scottish. Uh, yeah, could have been. Yeah, <laughs> cut that out, Rob. There is cut. But the, so, I mean, look, that's I didn't know about that. See, what I mean, so this is what yeah. I mean about the rabbit hole aspect to it. It, yeah. it. it just goes so deep and it's global. Yeah. But like North America seems to be a hot spot, right? Pick any state. I think but we're in, just louder. Exactly. Well, I think we're louder and more interested. And yeah. then there's the Native American aspect, yeah. which lends that folklore element to it. Right. And I just think, you know, someone like J.W. Burns, who's worth looking into, right? Okay. He was writing yeah. newspaper articles about this um, in the 20s. And then again, I think it resurfaced. In fact, he coined the term Sasquatch, which comes from a Native American, a particular tribe. And it's very similar. I won't, I won't try and pronounce it. Sure. But it's similar to Sasquatch. But he came up with the term Sasquatch to be a generic term to encompass all of these sightings of this big, hairy, wild man, yeah. which is really... You know, that's, you know, in, the, in its most simplest form, that's what it is, right? Okay. It's a wild man. It's hairy. It seems to be about nine foot tall, weigh about 700 pounds, and just have superhuman strength. Right. And have this, like, blood curdling, and even even things like having this ability um, to emit... Guy. Yeah. To emit infrasound, which seems to make people feel sick. Yeah. And, and, and uh, there's, a, there's a guy, um, I think he was on the Sasquatch Chronicles. He's a, a, a like a... An award, uh, literally a, a, an award. Oh, it's not something. He is a mountain biker. He, oh, right, right. Right? Have you heard I about remember, him? I heard, I heard that story. He just stops in the middle of a downhill uh, a descent after being told there's a bear on the, top of the, on the top of the ridge and they don't see it. But he goes and, for some, and he's the fastest and he gets to sort of a midpoint yeah. and he just gets off his bike and strips, he starts taking his clothes off. Right. Yeah, and, it's, and he hears this growl and no one else can hear it. And, he's, and he describes well, it. I remember he didn't hear it at first. He, he doesn't didn't know hear, why he's even doing it. Right, yeah. exactly. And, yeah. it's like the, and the puddle, the, his friends follow him and they go through the puddle and the splash of the puddle sort of like snap him out, slap him, snap him out of it. Yeah. But he feels like it's this 
uh, he can feel he can hear this really nice flowing water and it's warm Weird. and it's actually about 42 degrees yeah. Fahrenheit yeah. and he would freeze to death and he was soaking wet from yeah. the sweat and everything and he's starting to take his clothes off and fold I it. it was colder than that. Yeah, yeah. I, well, yeah, I mean, we can in look story. into it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Yeah, but that's like an infrasound type thing. Exactly. Yeah. And he said he felt paralyzed, uh, almost like, you know, frozen. Yeah. And his friends didn't believe him. And so one woman did. I think one of the other cyclists did. And yeah. this other guy was like, oh, this is, you know, it doesn't make any sense. That's why in history, I mean, we've got some other stuff that we, we were going to mention, too, as far as the history of this. And I think that's why these things seem so mystical to us. Why mm. it's it's we don't really fathom the cap capabilities of an animal that might be able to do what these things can do. Right. Imagine a full-size gorilla, you know, from, from Africa in our forest. Yeah, exactly. And what they're capable of. Yeah. Uh, that's, th you know, how- And these things are like twice the size. Yeah. And how fast they could be. Mm -hmm. And, you know, those are things that when you, you spent your whole life in the forest, but yet you have nearly or possibly greater the, the intelligence of a human, well, think of what we're capable of. Yeah. And as far as being sneaky and being able to stealthily and, and, creep and up to on elude things. us, right? Yeah, absolutely. If they don't want to be found, they're yeah. in a much stronger position. Yeah. Um, to avoid us. And if you know, it's kind of like if you know, you don't bother us, we won't bother you. But as I think, as you know, as towns develop and as as uh, urban areas um, expand. We we are cutting into their habitat more and more. Yeah. And maybe they're being maybe they're looking for food and they're getting close. And there's all of these sightings now where they're actually coming into farmland and they're being spotted on yeah. CCTV and things and they're even picking fruit yeah. from people's orchards. And that's I think where it gets interesting. And and it, also a bit scary. Hello, my name is MK Davis. I'd like to show you a video that at first looks like a little like it might be a little hokey. Uh, anyway, here goes. Uh, when I went, actually went there and I saw, you know, the height of the fence uh, compared to my height and, and actually got my own photo taken right there and then when you superimpose it into that video, you realize that it's it, because of the size of it, you know, uh, it's not something that I could just readily dismiss. Uh, it, you know, when something is that size, of course, there may be examples of people that size, but, you know, I, they're not common. And then the speed and agility and how quickly it moves being that size, um, you know, leads me to believe that, you know, that there's possibilities here uh, that this, you know, could, could potentially be real. So uh, there you have it. Right? I gotta tell you, I feel like it's more in the news now, but almost always it is something that is belittling the subject. It right. is something that's that's made laughable. But it's you're right. It's uh, we've got now Bigfoot as mascots of like basketball, right? And we've got or Sasquatch. Uh, yeah. We we've got so much public awareness of it, and I think that you know if we're talking about a controlled narrative, and I and I do want to get to more of the history, but I think that. That's what happens is we tend to start taking what we're told. We're told this is fake. Mm. And then our creative minds go to work and we say, well, wouldn't it be funny to create a movie like Missing Link where we have this thing walk out of the woods? Right. And what would that be like? Yeah. We can do great stuff with that. So it's not that that's being controlled, but I think, you know, when you when you have a subject that you don't want people to talk about, mm. then you, you put in the... Um, uh, the misinformation. Yeah. You and muddy you the let waters. time pass. Right. Yeah, exactly. And then after time has passed, and uh, look, how much are we burning up forest right now? Mm. And we're spreading out like uh, so many people live in cities. Yeah. Right. We're not used to living in the in the forest. People who live in the forest, they run into Sasquatch. Yeah. And then they talk about it. And the millions of people who live in cities go, really? Mm -hmm. I've heard that. It's so fake. alien to us. Right. right? If I, you know, and if you don't understand um, how to hunt, or how to live out in the wilderness. Yeah. We just can't we just cannot get our heads around it. When I had come down this hill, I had seen this creature cross the road.
they would have ripped my locked door from my truck, extracted me from my vehicle, and there wouldn't have been a damn thing I could have done about it. This thing, I got to notice in its eyes. Its eyes was real, real evil, real sinister looking. You know, the look it was giving me. The very fact that these people are so believable, yeah, and and half of them don't even know how to use the internet, right? And the, the the way they talk, you know, these guys are like, I've been sending you an email, but I wasn't sure if it was getting through. You know what yeah. I mean? They're just such <laughs> genuine people. Oh, you mean like, people who give their yeah, anecdotal it, yeah, reports. and it's yeah. like, and the way they tell it, I mean, yeah. you at some point you've got to kind of trust your instincts. And so, does this person sound like? He's telling the truth. Right. Right. And it's like, you know, like be a human, you know, yeah. don't just be like, well, where's the evidence? Because sometimes the story, it's, sometimes it's just a story. Yeah. Sometimes it's not on film right. or, or cassette recording. Right. But there are so many, you know, there's all this video and it always seems to be blurry, right? Yeah. Which doesn't help anybody's well, case. Well, you know, if it, talking about how um, these things, if, the, if they existed, right, which I fully believe they do. Mm. How could they hide? How could they disappear so fast? Well, I remember as a kid even playing playing hide and go seek, and we play we play something called flashlight tag at right. night, right? So one yeah. person has a flashlight, and you go searching for people. And the best way to not get caught was to go into an open area of grass and lay down facing the person. Right. You have no silhouette, and this is a little kid making this decision mm. to hide in the dark. Yeah. Right? You know, you're, you're, you're not going to get found. And just imagine the tricks they've evolved Think about over it. thousands of years. There was right? a video, and I, I don't know if I'm bringing it up without having a reference to it, but there was a, there was a video of a guy who hid himself in plain sight. Mm. And he did like a trick or two to break up his, his torso. But right. he would just lay down in a picture and then have the camera rolling and you couldn't find him right. in the picture. And then he would move and you'd say, oh my God, I couldn't believe exactly. that was him. Well, that reminds me of the... That, um, Primal Rage, oh, yeah? the Bigfoot movie. It's like, what I liked about it is that every now and then there was a scene um, and it kept going back to it. Like they were so close to yeah. the Bigfoot and they had no idea. Yeah. And so the, the humans would walk by, uh, you know, into the scene and, and, and then move out of the shop. And then the, 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 the Bigfoot would move and you're like, oh my God, I didn't see it, you know? So it was showing you some of the tricks that it, it may be able to employ. Right. And obviously that's from people's anecdotal stories, no, that's right? A, yeah, that's a fictional it, narrative. It's a fictional narrative, right. but it, it just goes to show, I mean, they were doing it in film right. to prove your point. And they try to make it, it you know, because we've, we've made films actually, and mm. when you try to make something as real as possible to make it as believable as possible, mm. to, to bring people in. Yeah. yeah. And that, you know, and they go into the folklore a little bit about, you know, how they actually talk about it's like the the chief of their tribe, I believe, is reincarnated and comes back as a Bigfoot. Yeah. And they, you know, and so they have this other, they have this spiritual element to film. it as well. Yeah. But like a lot of people talk about that because like yeah. people tend to fall into certain camps, and yeah. maybe we should look at that. It's like you know, there are, there are different. There's this all these different theories about what is the Bigfoot, right? right? right. So there's like this the creationist theory. Um, you know, where it's obviously comes from, it's almost biblical. Yeah. And then there's the um, the evolutionary theory. Yeah. Uh, but then it gets into sort of, are they Nephilim? Which again, it goes back to biblical. Right. Are they genetic demons? Are they some kind of hybrid of the two? Right. So it's like, you know, like, I, I or think- Or are they alien? Or are they, exactly. Yeah. Are they alien? And that, that brings me a lot of the, well, some of the stories I've had talk about how Sasquatch, when they hit a certain age, say they get to adolescence, they then go off with the star people, hmm. right? So it's like, do they become Chewbacca? Is that <laughs> what Chewbacca is? Did George Lucas know, know something we didn't know, I right? Because a few, because there's, there's even a, there's even another great story where this little boy who has befriended one, he takes his friend to meet who he calls Chewbacca Man, right? Right, and I apparently, yeah, that. and Chewbacca Man doesn't like the new friend, and the new friend, like you know, he's only eleven, and he right. just runs, he pelts it out of the forest, yeah. but it's like, obviously to a kid, it looks just like Chewbacca from Star Wars, right? Right. Well, we don't know if those are strictly anecdotal or confused yeah. kids or what, but yeah. we need to get more into the history.
But let's do that after we take a break. We'll be right back. Okay, welcome back. Um, so I wanted to get into the history of where some of this comes from, because, you know, we tend to think about a, a subject matter as in, you know, what do we know about it now and what is being done? You know, there's movies being made now where it's really playful. Mm. There's mascots. But this didn't start with, with our generation. This started right. hundreds of years ago. There's cave paintings right. of, of uh, things that the, the Native Americans called the hairy yeah. man. You're right. Yeah. Hairy man cave paintings. We can show some of those. But um, I wanted to talk about the Minnesota Iceman. This is fascinating. Yeah. yeah. So I think it was in the 60s. Right? I think he, I think he, the story goes, if I, if I remember the, the details, yeah. he, sh he shot the Bigfoot yeah. or the Iceman in 1960, but he literally kept it on ice in his freezer right. in his house. So a guy named uh, Frank Hansen. Right. right. So tours with yeah like five boat. years later and yes. this guy's like a yeah. captain in the air force or something right he's like a serious yes. guy yeah and so he tour it's a great video by bob gimlin i want to li link to that he's amazing he does an amazing yeah. uh, review of of the the minnesota iceman story hi i'm bob gimlin i'm going to try to explain what the minnesota iceman is and what happened to it the Minnesota Iceman is a perfect example of Bigfoot evidence, and in this case proof, that was ignored, mishandled, and subsequently forgotten, just because of what it was. Anyhow, like many great stories, this one begins in the 60s. There was a real, you know, relic hominid frozen in ice yeah. that was later swapped for a fake. Yeah. And, and at the border, I believe, between America uh, and Canada. Yeah. And it, yeah, it's very suspicious. And even the experts that managed to see the original, right. who, uh, you know, like it was like three scientists that actually looked into it. And yeah. they all said, we don't know what it is, but it's definitely real. It's a male, yeah. it's a male being of some kind. You know, they, yeah. they didn't say it was rubber or plastic. They didn't say it was a fake. They were like, we don't know what this is. Right. But the Smithsonian refused to come and investigate. That's right. They tried to get... The and, Princeton and so wouldn't send anybody... Want... So he didn't want to, he didn't want to thaw it out. So you imagine this giant block of ice. It's going to take a week to mm. thaw out anyway. Yeah. I mean, really, it's yeah. going to take a while. So he didn't want to thaw it out. And I can understand why. So you've got some scientists that are interested in it. They don't look at it for a day and then go, that's neat and walk away. They look at it for three days. Right. They spend hours in his trailer for three days yeah. looking at this thing. Doesn't take three days to establish if something is a fake right. or not, right? They documented so much about it, and clearly at a later point there was a smell. Yeah. I mean, I know that through the crack of the glass. Yeah. So, which again would have shown that he had a lot of foresight to put something dead in there. That was, if it was a real, if it was you know flesh deteriorating, to have that stench to make it feel more real. Because they said oh, it was an old, an, an old circus trick, right? Plus, they would, we're talking about or a the fair 60s. Trick. Yeah. So in the 60s, this would have been uh, a, a suit that could fool scientists yeah. for a course of three days looking at it through glass. Mm -hmm. And in the 60s, what were they capable of making? Whatever the risk, this kill-crazy fiend from hell must be destroyed. You may want to hide. You may want to forget what you see, but you can't. You can't escape. Stay where you are, Dr. Brockton. That's an order. Ah! Dr. Brockton! Ah! The Minnesota Iceman, one of the things they talked about is that there was a, a maker of suits like for the Planet of the Apes. Right. I forget the artist's name, but... Uh, he could make the special effects suits. Yeah. And he actually contacted him to make the fake. Well, right. Frank Hansen admits that. He says, yeah, I paid $20,000 to yeah. have a fake but suit made. But that was made. like two years later, right? Yeah. That was like 69 or something. And the last time it had been right. looked at was 67. Hansen got a uh, call from J. Edgar Hoover, who of course was the head of the FBI at that time, and they were uh, questioning him about this body that he was taking around from state to state, because uh, it's against federal law to take a dead body across the state line. 
You, you, you can't just do that. Uh, there's no inter interstate traffic of dead bodies. And so the FBI was very interested in taking a closer look at his body. And uh, so Mr. Hansen at that point got pretty uh, worried about it. And uh, he uh, contacted a Hollywood special effects man and had a, uh, a rubber dummy made that was a duplicate of the Iceman. And they replaced the actual exhibit, which originally had been a carcass, with this facsimile that had been produced by a Hollywood special effects man. Right. And so, so this was a six foot creature, and it was before the Patterson and Gimlin film, mm. but there was an awareness of Bigfoot at the time, of yeah. course. Yeah. Because there had been. Um, well, G.A.W. Burns was in the 1920s. Exactly. And he, yeah. that's when the, you know, that's when the, literally, the term was coined. And like it, he, it became, you know, people were interested because the stories were actually coming from Native Americans talking about yeah. what it is, why it exists, and how there are different types of them. And it was taken very seriously at yeah. that time. But then look, that's what happens with history, right? You just go back one generation and we forget. Yeah. So, you know, stuff that was two generations ago, yeah. we have forgotten more about the Sasquatch than what we know now. Because it's we, we've been inundated with all these distractions. And granddad tells you a story, and you're like, "Oh, that crazy exactly, granddad!" Exactly, yeah. exactly. It just you know, you just put it, you put it in a, the back of your mind, and don't think about it. But if I can find it, I'll include it. There was a, um, I won't say it was frontier uh, era, but um, kind of wild west days. There were some towns where they would have hairy men that would do something, and they would form a posse to go out and right. solve the problem yeah. because you're living on the frontier, you can't. You know, you got to protect your town. Well, if you think about it, that's probably, especially in England, where we have a lot of um, werewolf yeah. folklore, oh, right? Yeah, or dogman, you yeah. know what I mean? Like, yeah. we talk about dogman a lot. There's a lot of sightings and stories of people going missing. Right. And it's kind of the same thing. It's like, maybe, and I think we touched on this off camera, maybe the werewolf is connected to yeah. Bigfoot or the dogman because it, it helps us make sense, right, yeah. of, of this being this creature we that we don't really that know doesn't look like a dog and doesn't but it looks a lot it like looks a like person. a man and it looks like a dog so you and come you up with a werewolf probably was a man yeah that went crazy and then you come up with the story of you know again the lunatic comes out every full moon right yeah and it's um and it's like uh, but you that's know, not necessarily people who i think are creating fiction intentionally i think they're trying to understand their world make sense they're exactly to make sense yeah of it. It, hel it helps and they say, you well when sense. did you see it well i could only see it because of the, the moon moonlight bright yeah enough. so you connect the two and that's i mean look we're just guessing right we're feeling around in the dark right we obviously need some moonlight but the um the, yeah that's a <laughs> but the but i think it's like you know again no no smoke without fire yeah is that the saying the, yeah. yeah it is yeah, yeah. <laughs> no smoke without fire thanks rob <laughs> and so um and fix that in the edit right 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 but the um i just think there's so much information and i mean i was even uh, again I, when we talked about this it was like should we take another week to do yeah. more research, but yeah. I feel like it's a bottomless pit. Well, you know what we want to do with this video was was not wait. We wanted to introduce this subject and be able to go back to it because um, uh, I didn't want to mention this too soon, but I'm creating a platform for us to have these types of discussions. Yeah, and it needs to go on for a while. Yeah. So well, this is perfect for for yeah. for the for the platform because it's one of those conversations that's just going to grow and grow. Yeah. And there are so many people interested. They can keep adding to the story yeah. and you can fine tune the story. Absolutely. And eventually we yeah. will get DNA. Yeah. We will get not just, not just imprints of the Bigfoot. Yeah. And I mean, there's one, a video that I saw recently where there are literally, so, go, go I'll just say this one thing, 22 inch footprints in mud, in wet mud. Yeah. They're 40, 47 inches apart. Yeah. And there's about 150 of them. Yeah. Now to fake that would have been a mammoth task. Right. Right. So it's like, so these I, guys are so creative. That if perfectly hits it. on a piece of news that I want to point out about how uh, the the public narrative is controlled in some ways. Mm. I don't think movies need to be have creatives told what to make because they're just participating. Right. But you have the New York Times uh, pull. Um, uh, see, I'll, I'll pull up, the, I'll show the article. Yeah. But we have the New York Times front page when the guy who created the footsteps dies, right? Right. And they say the Bigfoot lore outlives him. Apparently this guy was the source for the name Bigfoot. Okay, And right. he, uh, I, I think it was- um, So he was like caught logging. faking by like making fake feet and stepping yeah, into- Yeah, so, so there were the actually some, some workers, if I remember the story right, 
because uh, I, I need to reread the New York Times article, but uh, the Times article doesn't focus on his story. But if I remember it right, uh, he worked in, around uh, a logging crew and his, his men were seeing big feet around some disturbances in the, in their, around their camp. Right. Right. And so to be funny, he had some big shoes created, some big okay. feet created. Right. And apparently at one point had someone drive him so that he could take giant So it was almost steps. like a prank. It was very much a prank. Yeah. But, but it, it kind of exploded. And the name Bigfoot kind of came from that. Right. Apparently. Okay. Yeah. Apparently. So, you know, that kind of stuff happens. I think it was just a guy having fun, mm. right? With the Lord. But, but he then didn't that's create a, that, anything. But that's the whole thing about muddying the waters, right? Exactly. Because a lot of people, if the, if it's uncomfortable and it doesn't fit, uh, the, what is it, um, a cognitive dissonance or whatever yeah. they, they call it. Yeah. If it doesn't fit the narrative of your, of your nine to five everyday life. Right. This is terrifying. It's like, what do you mean? When I go hunting or camping, yeah. or if I go for a hike, yeah. I may be mauled or kidnapped or eaten by a big by a Bigfoot. Yeah. Like, you know, that's you terrifying. Don't believe it. So yeah. then that does bleed into yeah. um, well, do the authorities want to admit there's creatures out there that are kidnapping children? And we can get into that because there's this missing 411. There's right. a lot of cases I talk about that. where they literally um, you know, all of these people go missing. Yeah. All of these um, hikers and campers and hunters, yeah. where are they going, yeah. right? And some people, some are returned. So, so people talk about how we don't have, we don't have material evidence. We don't have body. We don't have DNA. We don't have, there's so much that people claim we don't have. Mm. We don't have clear photos. But look, we had the Minnesota Iceman. Yeah. We have the Patterson-Gimlin yeah. film. Yeah. There's people who have DNA of poop. They have DNA of hair, right? right? And uh, there's been people who've talked about how they bury their, their dead. Right. Almost every story I hear about somebody shooting them, they come back and get them. Okay. Yeah. Right? So uh, not every story. Apart I've from heard, Iceman. But, right. Because he shot it. Yeah. Or did he get it yeah. from Vietnam and see, smuggle it into see, the country? You know, there's questions about whether his story of shooting it was yeah. something that he made A up. A cover to up to not get into trouble. Yeah. But, uh, but he could have gotten it from another country and, and brought it in because he had the... Maybe. And there were sightings, you know, they, you know, a lot of Vietnam vets yeah. talk about the Bigfoot yeah. or the, the equivalent of Bigfoot in the jungles. Yes. And there's actually a really interesting story. They're not as big as what we No, seen. they're not as big, yeah. uh, but, they, but they're, they're the same thing. These wild, the wild man of the forest, yeah. right? And I think um, it's, there's a really good story uh, on Sasquatch Chronicles okay. where an ex-vet says... I'll have to link to those guys. It's a great, great podcast. Yeah, uh, they're really podcast. good. Yeah. And, uh, and so... Um, they talk about how he heard the stories in Vietnam and the last thing he thought was when he came back to Ohio or Kentucky, or I forget the state, he actually gets to meet one. He meets one in real life. So he has okay. his own story and he yeah. says, I knew about them, but I didn't think I'd ever, you know, I didn't think I'd find one on my, literally on my doorstep, yes. right? And so he tells this whole story of like, um, you, you maybe, again, going tying it in with the Iceman, maybe the Iceman did bring it back from Vietnam because apparently there were a lot of sightings sure. there and it was, again, folklore. You know, I wanted to touch on the, the fact that they are close by. And, and I feel like that's what's happening is, is um, if there is any, any group controlling a narrative, what they do is put in information that distorts what we believe right. until enough time has passed to where they don't have to worry about it anymore. Yeah. And you certainly don't want to try and get rid of everything. So, for instance, if you have... Uh, a human-like being living in the forest, mm -hmm. and you, your forests are disappearing. We're spreading out. Uh, there's, there's actually a guy. Um, uh, I forget what his uh, YouTube is. I'll have to link to him. Who, who claims that Bigfoot lives a lot closer than we believe. Right. That they're yeah. in forests. He's found uh, structures around playgrounds. Mm -hmm. We should talk about that a little bit. Yeah. But I don't think, and you know, everybody assumes you have to go crazy into crazy wilderness. To, to see these things, and I don't think that's true. Right. Hi folks, Christopher Noel here, and I really just want to make this short video for two reasons. One, to thank everybody who is listening to and watching the new podcast, The Nearness of You, Sasquatch on the Boundaries. It seems to be gaining steam, and I'm very grateful for this, and grateful to my wonderful guests that so far have shared very, very um, credible and compelling evidence and experiences about the strange and 
kind of shocking, startling proximity of human civilization to our large and wild and ingenious next of kin. But, I think I've yeah. seen some of his videos. He talks about the Y-shaped twigs a lot. Yeah. He's got this thing where uh, when he when he these little play areas that Bigfoot impossible have. Impossible visits. Is that the one? Um, I, I can't it's remember the name. Impossible visits. I'm gonna okay. link to it. But he he I know he has a couple of videos of if it's the same guy. Yeah. Um, talking about they leave. They really like twigs that are in the Y shape, and they just have them dangling or hanging or placed on the floor in okay, like unusual yeah. places. And it's like, you can see there's an intelligence there. It's yeah. not just random, you know? Yeah. And, and he keeps saying, look, there's another one, there's another one, there's another one. And it's interesting. Yeah. Um, and he has this thing about it and he thinks that's a shape that means something to them, right. right? And so I think that's the same guy, but yeah, he's doing one video where he's finding all these things yeah. and there's a freeway right next to this exactly. little stream. Yeah. And it's like, he's like, they're closer than you think. Yeah. And the, you know, and I think that's just because we've, you know, we like you say, our There's cities guy are in growing. Utah, uh, who was doing that? Rio. Yes. That's yeah. The... I want you to appreciate this. Okay. Hopefully, you can see that that's totally constructed. See, some of these branches are actually off the ground. This is totally constructed. This is a big igloo shelter thing right on the side of a park. Anyway, what I was saying is people don't talk to each other about Sasquatch. And so I end up getting all of these stories that are recent, I mean, or that are happening currently. Um, people are contacting me and telling me about this and they don't know that five other of their neighbors have contacted me as well. And I don't tell them because I, you know, I respect people's wishes to be confidential or private or whatever. And so in this neighborhood, tons of people have told me about this stuff and no one talks to each other so he, everyone remains in ignorance about how active this park is he would find their little yeah. campsites and the uh, almost like these gifting stations right where they would build fake fires and the they fake would fires. and they love shiny things and they All would right, look, you know, let's talk more about that we're, let's take a break real quick and we're gonna come back i want to talk about that and how that leads into missing people oh yeah we'll be right back A ducky smother. I was visiting my parents in uh, Ritter, Oregon, and so I said, oh, where's your brother? And he said, oh, he went around the barn. Then we went back to find him, and um, he wasn't there. According to Oregon State Police, there are 41 missing children in Oregon. It's an unknown what happened to these people. It extends far beyond just kids. Hundreds of people vanished from our national parks and forests under very unusual but very similar circumstances. In a lot of these cases, search and rescue or the volunteers searching people have already gone over certain areas, not once, not twice, but even dozens of times. And then the child is found there maybe a year, maybe a few years later. I think that I'm actually sitting here holding my son, but this is, this is what I have left of him. We're talking about a, a very large, even worldwide, collective of information here. And we turned around, and here was this little toddler walking out of the fog with absolutely no clothes on at all. Well, it's, it's troubling. You know, I got members of my search and rescue group that aren't sleeping too well. If you have areas that you don't even know there's missing people, it makes it really difficult to reinvestigate when more information comes. Some of these situations are so unusual, you have to think beyond the bounds of what's normal. One of the reports says, well, the reason why you didn't find any DNA or blood or anything on Jared's clothing is because either he or something removed his clothing. There's just too much. There are too many questions that don't have answers. When did the FBI get involved? Mm -hmm. The family's been accused of, of drug use and of sleeping with certain people. Everybody thinks, well, I'll come up to a polygraph. Go ahead. Go right on ahead. I have nothing to hide. You know, everybody wants an answer. Hopefully someday we'll come up with one. Does the National Park Service keep a list of missing people in their parks? Welcome back. 
Thanks for sticking with us. Uh, you know, the crazy thing is there's so much to go over here. Uh, I think we're trying to present so much to the yeah. audience. I mean, it's exciting. It feels rushed. Yeah. But it's also an excitement there because there's so much information and the, yeah. and the stories are so, they're entertaining yeah. and they're terrifying at the same time because there's so many kids that yeah. go missing for days, sometimes weeks, and then they're returned. Yeah. And they, they are returned to a spot that's already been searched by, you know, local agencies. And a lot of the times they're missing their shoes, they're missing their clothes. They yeah. talk about the, 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 the gorilla or but the bear. This is cool. And I, I want to get to the missing ones too, but this is cool because you, you were telling me about this. And this kid, this is recent news. Mm. And uh, I forget the exact date. But and Thinker Thunker, yes, a great channel. Yeah, uh, I don't, uh, used to follow that guy's him on amazing. Facebook. He used to post on Facebook, and now he has a YouTube channel. Um, so yeah, great, great stuff. Uh, his analysis <laughs> are really good, and he has a video on this. Hey, this is Thinker Thunker. Have you heard this? A three-year-old boy went missing for two nights in freezing temperatures, out alone in the woods, wetlands after mysteriously disappearing from his grandmother's house in North Carolina. And here's what's so amazing about that. The answer that everyone, news anchors, reporters, TV personalities, seemed perfectly fine with was either that a kindly, cuddly bear happened by and took the child in, or God above sent an angelic bear to care for this child. Yeah. And they, I mean, their best explanation was it was an angelic bear. Yeah. There's yeah. never been a case of a bear actually taking in a human child and, right. and caring for it, right? If, and, and, and in winter, as far as I know, yeah, freezing. Freezing and bears are hibernating in winter. Yeah. So what was well, this bed? It is possible that it's possible, they, but, they do. but there's never been a case of a, of a bear bringing back never, multiple never multiple days. <laughs> yeah. And, and bringing back, I mean, the child didn't freeze. Right. It crossed a frozen stream yeah. or river that couldn't, it couldn't have crossed by itself. So it was carried. Yeah. Right. All of these things indicate it wasn't a bear. Yeah. It was either another human or it was something unknown like a Bigfoot. Right now, this this the, the the kid described the thing that was looking after it as a bear. Yeah. And what would a kid do? You know, but like he it, knows what a dog is. Yeah. I mean, more than likely, he knows what a dog is. He knows what a cat is. Was he three? Yeah. So I got it right here. So there's three, and uh, yeah, 25 pounds. So this three-year-old, 25-pound kid survives for for multiple days mm -hmm. with a couple of scratches All on his. Oh, it takes just one day. Yeah. Oh yeah, um, an adult an adult would freeze to death, you know, over three days easily. Yeah, and he went missing. He went missing from, you know, he yeah. Went, yeah, he went missing from his grandmother's house, I believe, and then he was found yeah. in a completely different location, a location that had already been searched, and it, it wasn't like he was found at the, the 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 you know the steps of a church. Right. It was found in like a, a clearing or a paddock or a prairie, right. a little you know a little a little clearing in the forest. Yeah. And a woman literally had a, a kid screaming or talking while she was walking her three dogs. Yeah. So it's like it wasn't like you know the kid could have died in the place it was found. You know yeah. what, you know what I mean? But it Absolutely. was almost like put back in a place that was relatively safe. But it was over the stream over the, this frozen stream or this uh, really ice cold river. Yeah. And it was like, what, you can't explain that. Where right. the evidence of it was an angelic bear, yeah. right? Come on, you know, bears don't do that. They would eat you or ignore you, right? And angelic, I mean, you know, talk about bringing in the supernatural I know. to explain something that really happened. And it's not an isolated case. This happens a lot. Some kids go missing for weeks and come back and talk about, oh, we didn't leave because we didn't want to upset the the, the, the hairy man or the wild man. And there's, they, they, you know, they- There's they, been they, cases where kids were brought back to their camp. Right. They wandered off in the woods, got lost, yep. and were brought back to their camp. Exactly. And, and the really interesting thing is there's a, there's, if you, there is a major crossover between sightings of Bigfoot and areas where they go, where people go missing. So, yeah. the, you know, so like, yeah. the, it's not like, oh, well, you know, these people are all going missing in Arizona, which they are. A lot of people apparently do go missing, especially kids. Yeah. But it's like, but it's not like you only ever hear about Bigfoot in Washington or 
or California right. or Kentucky, right? There's, there's like where, where there are Bigfoot sightings, a lot of people go missing. Yeah. And it's like, you know, some of these people are hunters. They're not just kids. Right. They're hunters who you'd expect to survive. You know, they're not going to die. They're exactly. trained. They know what they're doing. Yeah. Or, you know, are they're, prof- you know, like professional hikers, that kind of thing. And so... Right. It, this, there's just there are so many unanswered questions, and I think it's very important. We should and do that, a complete a, a complete another episode on the missing four one one. Definitely, yeah, I, I think that's a good idea we'll because if that. you if you are, I mean, and maybe this is something for our you know for our audience to consider. It's like yeah. if you are going to go out, it's right. like pack a gun, right? I know that sounds alarmist. So to be clear, we're saying Bigfoot is real. There's a history of it. It's now in the consciousness, global consciousness. Yeah. That everybody knows about it. It's not being admitted mm. by the media. And you can understand why yeah, it's not being admitted why. by the media yeah. stroke authorities. Right. Because that would basically destroy, or potentially lose billions of dollars in revenue for all of the parks, sure. hiking, would have to be protected hunting, yeah. fishing, all of that stuff. I right. mean, would you think twice about going out if you knew there was basically a nine foot right. gorilla type human being? I really would love to investigate where that would come from because think about it has to be global too. Because all of the governments of the world have to have to say, well, we've investigated this yeah. and we're not getting anywhere. Well, there's deathbed confes- confessions of like, um, uh, of sheriffs and stuff, and there's a really good one. I think again, it's it's the Chronicles, it's yeah. um, Sasquatch Chronicles, where he talks about he's literally dying, and he confesses to I believe two Jehovah's Witnesses who were also fellow hunters, and while they're in his house talking about you know um, the wit- the witness, uh, sure. um, they may be Mormons, but you know they're talking about God and the uh-huh. Bible and everything else, and they literally get talking about hunting, and over a, like two or three meetings. He says, look, I'm dying. I need to get something off my chest. And he tells them about an operation he was involved in. And he has evidence. He has photographs. And he has a recording. And he tells them how they shot one. They literally shot the mother in the, again, the kids, right? They were they were using helicopters to scare them. They were trying to get them, they were trying to corral them into a set. Have you heard this story? No, I don't think They were I trying have. to corral them into a canyon so they could capture them because yeah. they wanted to research them, right? Yeah. And he said, this was our mission, to capture one. Yeah. And and literally, they he shot the mother and the mother, he said, just d- leaked it. And they've got it all on tape. You can hear the sc- the, the howls of when it gets shot. That sounds familiar. Right? Yeah. And it does this, this like this seven second like growl or screech in pain and it runs off and the baby who she the mother had already just hidden like in in some brush the baby runs after its mother because obviously it's terrified and the baby's only small i think only about three feet and they're literally the guy who's hanging from a ladder at the bottom of a helicopter takes a shot and shoots it in between the eyes and kills it and they take the body of that of that bigfoot hmm. so we know right sure. as or, you know, as right. a society, we know well, that they exist. If that's true, that's but, true. again, One what of the did great he have to gain? From David Politis, uh, missing four one one, happened right. again in North Carolina, in the mountains, on a bald mountain. A uh, uh, little kid, and I think his name was Jared. Was okay. Missing, and I'll, I'll link to that. Dennis Lloyd Martin. What happened to Dennis? So of all the cases I've ever written about, this is the one that disturbs me the most, George. Disturbs uh, you? Okay. June 14th, 1969, six years old, Dennis went with his dad, his grandfather, his nine-year-old brother into uh, Great Smoky Mountain National Park, and they hiked into an to a area called Spence Field. Both families are sitting down on the grass, boys are running around, they start playing a game of hide-and-seek. Mr. Martin is one of the sharpest men you'll ever meet, and uh, he sees his son run behind a bush right on the edge of the field, right where the, the wilderness starts, and everyone's playing hide-and-seek, and, seek and it's, he's watching. And everybody comes out after the end of the game, and his son doesn't come out. He walks over to the bush, his son isn't there, and he takes off on a dead run down the Appalachian Trail for two miles. He doesn't find him. Uh, he goes missing, and the FBI shows up. The Green Beret shows up. If right. I, if I, if I, yeah. The military shows up. They don't talk to each other. They go out with weapons mm-hmm. and do their own thing. Yeah. For a bear. What do they do? Right. Yeah. Exactly. Well, it's a missing kid. Well, exactly. But what's, they don't what show are they up scared of? Kid. What are they, you know, the, the scariest thing out there is a bear. Right. Right. As far as we know, that's the official thing we're supposed to be scared of, yeah. scared of right? Or a mountain lion. Yeah. But, like, you know, again, it's like, so, you know. 
I know we've probably run on for a long episode. I don't I want to take away from anything you have to say. My final thing. I just, be, uh, you know, there's the news only wants to talk about the stuff that's silly. Yeah. They only want to talk about stuff that they can blow off. So, so that's why we're doing a show like this is because in the mainstream news, you're only going to hear about the things that, that blow this off. Yeah. And we want to talk about, bring it more to public awareness. Mm -hmm. There's so many avenues we could take to, yeah. to investigate this more. Uh, there was a, it, uh, uh, a roadside uh, statue that I'll link to. And the, the guy had created this statue and put it in his yard or in the woods just inside the tree line. And it had eyes that glow. And people were driving by it, seeing this thing, and then calling to report. They were calling animal control right. to report. So they put out this notice to everyone saying, hey, if you see glowing red eyes in the woods, mm. don't call yeah. us. It's just this guy. Exactly. Well, Unless it's a real one. Right. But Which you can now, you can't, you see again, would say, don't muddying call the waters, right? Yeah. And well, so, the, yeah, well, you don't know. Sasquatch it? Chronicles literally says, right, on their website and in their in their interviews, if you see one, do not call the police, call do, us. Yeah. They say that now because people have been arrested. There's one woman killed one in her back garden. Is, is the, Wes going to pay us for this episode? I know, right? West I Kermer. hope so. Yeah. Well, look, they're doing great work. They and, do. And yeah. this is the thing. I think we should say, you know, listened in a while. two things we should say. Yeah. Don't go out alone. Yeah. Go with a partner. Yeah. Carry a gun as powerful as Absolutely. you can, yeah. right? Because you never know what's out there. And basically, if you do see something and you capture some kind of image or just have a story, report it to to um, you know one of these uh, one of these um, websites yeah. and 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 add to the story, you know, yeah. or even thinker. Yeah. It's like you know, bring it to the platform because this is something that is so interesting to so yeah. many people. Yeah. And there's so much information, and now there's so much disinformation. Yeah. It would be nice to streamline that and get the good and fine, you know, to literally pare it down, fine tune it, and get the best evidence we can to present that case. Because I know people are suing, like in Canada, there's a guy who's suing the government, or he's taking it to court, right? Yeah. So it does exist, and this yeah. is a public service announcement, right? Yeah. He's saying, no, you should be telling the people there's a danger out there because people are disappearing and people are dying right. and people are being terrified and, get, and, and getting PTSD from seeing something they were told yeah. was just a myth. Yeah, that's a, the, the guy, Sylvanic. Big yes, guy, Sylvanic, uh, yeah. Sylvanic uh, Apologetica, I think is his website or his blog. <laughs> um, and also um, here in California, there was a woman suing who saw a Bigfoot in a tree on a trail. She knew it wasn't a bear. And uh, Todd Standing was the guy. Right, Todd Standing. This is Harrison Hot Springs, the heart of Bigfoot country. And for many here, it's nothing more than just a tourist attraction. But Todd thinks otherwise. And now he's gone to the BC Ministry of Wildlife and Fisheries to petition them to recognize the Sasquatch as a legitimate species. I want the law courts to force uh, the BC Fish and Wildlife to take responsibility for the species and insist they go on a three month ecological expedition with me, at which time I will take them out and show them a Sasquatch as I've done before, as I will have proven in court. Good day, my name is Todd Standing. I am the man who takes people out into the field. And has them... His court appeal also coincides with the release of a new Netflix documentary he's made, which he says provides irrefutable evidence of Sasquatch sightings. <laughs> last bit of battery power in my camera, I was able to film these incredible images in full HD at 50 times optical zoom. Say what you 
you want about him, but he, he took his case to court. So, you know, maybe he's making this uh, all up. Maybe he's doing it for publicity, mm. but he has a lot of inf- interesting stuff. He's taken out scientists to show them right. where, where he's been. And uh, he, he tried to formalize this by taking him to court. And so did the woman who's here. She said, I saw this. My daughters are walking on the trail. I called to report it and they, they make fun of me. They yeah. say, I'm seeing a bear. They make fun of me. She's like, there's no black bears here. That's not hey, what we're seeing, yeah. you know? And uh, I think it was Lake Arrowhead is where it was. Okay. Was there. yeah. I'll, I'll there's another one where that. a guy was pushed down and he was pushed down with so much force. That was here he's, too, right? he's, Yeah, California, all black and blue. He's like, all his face was smashed in. And he's like in his, I think he was in his mid-60s. Yeah. And, it, and they basically said, oh, it was a mountain lion. It yeah. just jumped out of a tree onto him. And this, again, look into that. There's so many like problems with the stories. The official version oh, yeah. is always this watered down version of what of, of, of the actual story. And it's yeah. like, again, you know. I think uh, I'm searching for it. I think Thinker Thunker did a review of that one as well. Yeah, he's, he he's really good. He's really thorough. Yeah. Hey, this is Thinker Thunker. Have you ever heard of anybody being shoved to death? Not shoved off a cliff, not shoved in front of a bus or down steps or anything like that, but just shoved down to the ground so hard they died or at least suffered serious damage. Chances are you haven't, unless it was some freak accident or the pushy was in seriously bad health to begin with. Now I bring this up to illustrate the fact that shoving isn't a lethal force, is it? I mean, we know that. Shoving is a way to start a fight, not in one. But this man here, Mr. Slaughterback, was out for a walk, broad daylight in Ansel Hoffman Park, Carmichael, California. Other people were in the park at the time. And he was shoved down so hard by someone or something that it broke his wrist, chipped some teeth, fractured an eye socket, along with the other damage you see here. Now that is some shove. I mean, another one, I think, think of, think of Thunker. Uh, is really good at breaking down like the proportions of the face and the proportions of the body. Yeah. And it's like, it, it just goes to show like the, the, these people that are actually, if they're faking this stuff, yeah, they are wasting their lives, right? Absolutely. They could be, they could be in Hollywood creating the best special effects we've ever seen. Right. And it's like, you know, they, but they do it for very little, well, basically no money, right? no fame. If anything, it backfires and people think they're crazy and yeah. they get ostracized, right? Yeah. It's never turned out to be a good thing. But like, again, the patty thing, where's the suit, right? right? Why did the show's the suit? That could be worth There's millions so of dollars now. That we could run on for <laughs> yeah. hours. Um, what I want to do is say, uh, thanks for sticking with us. If you... Uh, if you want to check out the latest movies, uh, let us know what you think about that. I'm going to take the kids to go see that, Yeah. Uh, the, the latest movie. Uh, they're not paying us. Maybe it would be nice if they did. We don't know if it's a good movie. Um, but uh, hopefully we've we've got you more interested in this uh, Sasquatch yeah. subject matter. And it's a wanna, fascinating topic. Yeah. Look into it. We want to keep it going. So and be anyway. safe. Good. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Bye, guys.